Uh, we are joined now by Congressman Blake Farenhold, member of the House Oversight Committee. And, Congressman, thank you so much for your time, sir. Oh, it's good to be with you, Cam. All right. I know that uh, you just stepped away from the uh, hearing where the Attorney General spent about uh, four hours uh, getting some tough questioning and, uh, let's be honest, getting some real fawning questioning from members of the committee as well, like your colleague uh, Jerry Connolly, a Democrat from Northern Virginia. Uh, I, I watched your exchange with the Attorney General, and, uh, you know, the, what, what were you hoping to, uh, to, to get out of your questions to Eric Holder today? Well, I, I wanted him to come to the realization that if you looked at the way he handled this stuff, the way somebody from the outside looked at it, rather than looking at it as somebody trying to save their own rear end, maybe he'd realize the right thing to do is step aside and get, some, uh, get somebody more confident to run the agency. Uh, I really, I think I really hit home when I said, you know, if somebody uh, under my watch was killed like Brian Terry was killed, I would want to know every day what the status is of that investigation. Yeah, and you know, Congressman, you said that to Holder, and he really stumbled there for a while. How do I respond to that? What was your reaction when you saw him? He didn't just come back and, and respond to you saying, hey, you know, I am uh, responsible. I am a hands-on kind of guy. He really stumbled. Well, again, I, if it's not in your personality to, uh, to be concerned about that, it's just not. And I, you know, I would have had it. I would have had a, had to call it a second to answer that question. But, you know, I think he was trying to come up with, you know, I can't read anything into it, but I, I, I was surprised. And, you know, I also planted the bug in his ear about the two pilots uh, who were down in uh, down mm -hmm. in Palomar as well. But, you know, and, and Holder keeps saying, I didn't know. I would have changed things if I did know. And, and as you, on the same line of, of, of your questioning, is that a good enough reason? Uh, I don't, you know, if you didn't know, you should have known. That, mm -hmm. I think we demand more of our government officials than uh, just playing dumb. Well, and, you know, I got to say, uh, Representative, you know, you and your colleagues uh, time and again went back to some of these documents mm -hmm. that have been released and, and went through the timeline because it seems so extraordinary that, uh, for instance, Eric Holder's deputy chief of staff uh, would have been informed the guns found at the murder scene of Brian Terry uh, go back to this investigation that, quote, we were going to talk about, which would certainly indicate, you know, familiarity with Fast and Furious in the attorney general's office. Uh, and yet the attorney general, uh, you know, he, he continues to play dumb and said, well, no, I, ne I never heard anything about this until early February, until uh, this all became public knowledge. Yeah, my theory is one of the reasons they're withholding some of the documents after the congressional investigation started is there's a cover-up. Mm -hmm. And we, we all know, back from even from the Richard Nixon days, that it's a cover-up that gets you every time. Well, and it was interesting because, you know, when, when uh, many of you on the committee, a few of you mentioned the word cover-up, did you see, you know, Holder's reaction was, oh, there you go again with that magic word, cover-up. But do you have any doubt that the reason they're withholding these documents is because they do have something to hide. I don't see any other reason uh, to w withhold those documents. You know, he was arguing long-standing policy, separation of powers. Look, if there was exculpatory information in those documents, doc information that pointed to his innocence, you know they wouldn't hesitate for a second to release them. Come on. Mm -hmm. And what about the fact, again, I think it was a couple of the congressmen bringing up the fact that we're talking about 13 months down the road, and he has oh, taken no time. action. He hasn't fired anybody. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Well, they've reassigned a couple of people, but, you know, no, no reprimands, no firings. Uh, again, poor management style. If there's a there's a problem within your organization. You need to root it out quickly. I mean, based on the way Holder has handled this, I wouldn't trust him to manage a convenience store. You know, uh, Representative, uh, when you hear the, uh, the some of the, the, the questions from your colleagues, like a Representative Cummings or uh, mm -hmm. a Representative Connolly, uh, it seemed like there was absolutely no desire to... Uh, to get to the bottom of this, to to you know to to answer these unanswered questions. In fact, you know we their, heard their, we, tone, their tone has changed since the beginning. 
you know, early on they were as appalled by this as we were. Now I think they're circling the wagons, and I'm, I'm even more deeply troubled by the fact that they're calling for increased gun laws, which yes. one of my theories is the whole reason Operation Fast and Furious was green-lighted in the beginning was to create a crisis to, uh, that would start the debate for stronger gun laws. I mean, I don't want to sound like a black, opter, you know, black helicopters, midnight to 6 a.m. radio guy, but it, 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 it certainly is panning out that way. Well, and they came right on and asked him, you know, what do you think about this assault weapon ban? Would that have made a difference? And Holder, I mean, he, he really revealed the, uh, the administration's hand, and I think that's what everybody's concerned about if we see another uh, term for this president. But, you know, he talked about, hey, it would have made a difference on what's happening in Mexico. But, you know, they keep talking about we need more gun laws. Uh, we need to give ATF more authority. But what difference would that have made, bring it back to Operation Fast and Furious? Those um, guns still would have walked. It would have made absolutely no difference. You may, you know, you can still prosecute them for the straw buy. It's against the law to be a straw buyer to buy guns and they, for somebody else. That is against the law today. We don't have to change a single law. We could have arrested the people who bought them and stopped the guns from walking. We could have done the operation in a reasonable fashion, followed them the way they exchanged the guns, arrested both the buyer and the seller, and tried to flip them. But instead, we just let them go. With absolutely no, you know, they were all trying to obfuscate uh, Operation Fast and Furious with a Bush administration uh, program where they were cooperating with the Mexican government to catch them on the other side. And then they're trying to blur and obfuscate. It's completely, no cooperation in Fast and Furious with the Mexican authorities at all. You know, Representative, let me ask you, uh, there was a, a graphic uh, that was posted, uh, and it was, it was really fascinating, the, the Stonewall City uh, that we saw here, because, you know, uh, Attorney General Holder kept talking about how forthcoming uh, the administration has been and Maine Justice has been. Eight percent of the documents that the Justice Department has identified as relevant to, uh, to Fast and Furious uh, have been made public. Uh, 48 out of 70 justice officials involved in Fast and Furious, uh, the, the uh, Justice Department has denied access to those individuals. Uh, Two-thirds out of 22 categories of subpoenaed documents related to Fast and Furious, 66% have been completely ignored. And yet the Attorney General talks about how forthcoming and above board the administration has been. And again, your colleagues on the other side of the aisle uh, put out a report this week in which they basically said, look, th this investigation is completed. We don't need to uh, to ask any more questions. Uh, you know, Have you seen anything like this in your uh, time in Washington before now? Well, listen, I'm, I'm a freshman, so I don't have a whole lot of experience. <laughs> but I tell you, common sense dictated that the American taxpayer paid for these men and women's salary. They paid for these documents to be uh, created. They were all working on our dime, I and we have a right to see their work product as the overseers uh, just do. Well, listen, I, I absolutely agree with you. Now, do you think, uh, I mean, it seems like we're, we're, we're still headed towards a major showdown between uh, the Justice Department and the Oversight Committee. The Attorney General didn't back down. I, I know that he said that uh, uh, they would continue to provide more documents, but anything after February the 4th when uh, that letter yeah, was sent that? to Congress, he said, you know, you, you guys aren't going to get that information. Yeah, and, and you know what I heard when he said that anything after February uh, 4th, the day the cover-up began. Yeah. Let me ask you so, something. You know, that's what popped through my head. I, you know, that's just my thinking. Yeah. I, I've got to ask you, you had that hearing again today, and, you know, Holder kept repeating how many times he's been there. Um, but, I mean, what are we going to need to do? I know that uh, Congressman Issa is threatening contempt of Congress. Do you think we're moving closer and closer to that, or are we going to have more hearings? What needs to be done? I, I don't know what more can happen in, in hearings. You know, people can testify to whatever they want. We've, we've already raised questions as to the veracity of responses from the Justice Department. Uh, we need to see the documents. We need to see the email. You know, I, I used to be a lawyer, and uh, I'll never forget, uh, I was at a continuing legal education seminar, and they said the smoking gun is always in the email. Mm -hmm. I want to see those documents, and I want to see those emails. Well, it looks like it's going to be a fight to get him because he's not willing to turn him over. 
Bring it on. <laughs> Congressman Blake Farenhold from uh, Texas joining us here on NRANews.com this afternoon. And, Congressman, again, thank you so much for your time, sir. We appreciate you joining us so quickly after the hearing concluded. No problem. Have a good one. All right. You too, sir. Uh, Blake Farenhold, uh, a freshman congressman down from uh, South Texas.